Okay. Getting uh, getting uh, this recorded. I've got it recorded in two or three places. But I'm talking with Will Spencer, and he is doing research into well the Gulf oil spill, the chemtrails, and and they wrote it in stone. Will they wrote it in stone? In the Georgia Guidestones, they want to reduce the world's population to a manageable 500 million. I guess that'd be 499 million slaves and a million elite. <laughs> sure, looking that way with what's going on in the world today, isn't it? Yes, and and the pharmaceutical industries, in my opinion, are in on it because they don't make any money with those, you know, twenty thousand percent markup on on some of their drugs. They don't make any money off of it if you're not sick. So the whole agenda is to make you ill, make the people ill, drive them into to the hands of the pharmaceutical people or the medical industry. And, and they have even resorted to kidnapping people. They did this to uh, Mark Taylor, who's been uh, his mother uh, has been on my show a number of times. And uh, they, they took him in a medical facility and held him for a year, drugging him, drugging him, drugging him. They tried to drug me at my accident. They tried to drug me for three months. Now, maybe they needed to do that because I had a severe uh, head injury, maybe. Maybe they needed to run up three quarter million dollar hospital bill for three broken ribs. This is, uh, this, this is sinister to me. And, and, no, it's, and it's not just happening to me, it's happening to people. All of the, they've turned us into a nation of drug addicts the same way they did the Chinese, the same way the Sassoons made a fortune off of the opium trade in China. Well, it, it's a pretty widespread event. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, most of the clients that come to us uh, have been through the pharmaceutical uh, gamut and then the health store food uh, gamut and then they they're broke and they still don't have any health and uh, then then they call us uh, at last resort and uh, we've been pretty fortunate to just fill out the uh, the health care down to something that's really that simple and works and unbelievable I just hear stories every week from people that are I mean, the, the what the medical field does. I mean, holy! I uh, just I got story after story of the, the, the I mean, genocide almost, if you will. But they they don't want to kill you, but they sure do hurt you and harm you on their way to taking your money until you're useless money financially, and then they pretty much you know then you you you, you disappear or they you know and you die or something. Well, now what about you know they they there was a report out, Will that. The snow on Mount Rainier and Mount Shasta were contaminated. Yeah, we're it, working it, with those people uh, in uh, what? What are they spraying on us, or what are they spraying? Um, yeah, that's uh, G. Ed, G. Edward Griffin, I believe, is uh, doing something on that too. But, right, and the, the samples are high in metals, and uh, it's it's all it's changing the uh, pH, the biology, and the soil. They're, 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 it's almost like they're the uh, microorganisms are dying off in the soil because they're altering the pH. The, the ecosystem is being altered because of the metal. Now, now, but a byproduct of aluminum has been dumped into our water supply for years, called fluoride. Right. right. <laughs> Well, that's what they used in the 30s back in old Germany. I mean, that was uh, they figured that out quite a while ago on how to keep a people uh, a little bit on the dumb side, but yet manageable somewhat. Yeah. And then we have that happening here. So it seems like they just uh, World War II was just a transfer of the uh, of uh, th that the scientists and what was the Operation Paperclip? I think it was called. Uh, they just transferred all those over to uh, those people, scientists over to here and to America, and now we have basically a, a little more sophisticated uh, global attack. Well, there's yeah. no, there's no difference. The whole idea of of us, we had three communist countries fighting Germany because they had taken back their economics and they had restored their economics, and. Uh, 
you know, we, we and, and today they they are pushing us into this third world war, and they're demonizing the Muslims. <laughs> right. And uh, Albert Pike predicted that, by the way. So whether this is a Masonic plot or Jewish plot, I'll tell you what it is. It's a bankster plot, and it's the banksters and and, and, and founding fathers. You know, uh, Thomas Jefferson warned you. If you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land that we conquered. And that's what's happening right here. We got a million Americans homeless. The banks are the the banks are the bad guys here, and the banks are controlling the governments through the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, through the uh, and, and through the the CIA, the Mossad. They're they're run, They're the ones that are running the drugs in, Will. And and if the pharmaceutical drugs don't get you, you know the uh, the cocaine, the heroin, and the uh, methamphetamine, you know will take care of maybe fifteen thousand a year, but not nearly as many as the medical profession. Right, right. In 2005, I ended up in Mena, Arkansas, and uh, after being with you for a while and uh, seeing what happened with the Clintons and everything, I started asking some questions with the locals in Mena. <laughs> and unbelievable what you can uh, find out when you just simply ask them simple questions to some old timers that they'll tell you the answer. The, the amount of drugs that are coming into Mena, Arkansas, <laughs> uh, with, with the C-130s, right into their local airports there. Uh, amazing. I mean, they actually, the one old timer was so mad, he was, he said that he voted Clinton out of Arkansas to get him into the presidency to get him out of the state. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's the, our own, uh, what do you want, um, the government or military, whatever. I mean, they're the ones who are actually running a lot of these drugs into this country. Well, since I've seen you, I've written a book called Mystery Babylon. And I, I go back in history 2,000 years to the Mark of the Beast and the, uh, and the whole beast system predicted in uh, Revelations. But I, I've, got, I've got Operation Watchtower in here, and this is the documentation of them smuggling. Uh, Operation Watchtower was building the guide towers in Colombia to guide planes in, and they, they guided in during Colonel Edward P. Cotolo's watch, they got in 100 planes, the cargo was cocaine, and I turned that over to Bill Clinton. I sent that document to Bill Clinton, and one of the guys that was on Cotolo's team, William Tyree, who's doing life in Walpole Prison, started laughing at me. He said, Clay, Clinton ain't going to do nothing with that. He was per the protection for me a little airport called Mina. You'll hear about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been over the last nine years since I <clears throat> I left uh, Bingham. Um, I pretty much put, put my focus on health because, as you know, I ended up in Bingham because I was in an automobile accident over in wonderful Texas, and I had to repair myself and. That led me down this road, and what led me to this uh, this electric concept, and um, uh, uh, that that's really where my passion is is helping people feel better. And um, although I kind of, as I'm traveling around the country, I still like to check out the latest theory or conspiracy, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's more real than it is conspiracy to me or theory to me, but. Um, it's more about the health for me uh, to help people feel good. That, that's kind of my passion lately. Well, uh, tell me about uh, what what you're doing as far as the, uh, the what is a, the body electrician? We know that the problems are happening. You know, I, I, I try to look for answers. I think that's what Liberty Village is. That's what Bingham was. And, and uh, you know, that's the way America could be again. But uh, uh, tell me about your body electrician. Well, after I was in the automobile accident earlier in old in old two, uh, I got we got hit by a truck. Uh, we were going fifty in our camper, and uh, our pickup pulling the camper, and we got hit with it by a semi going eighty, a little over eighty. And I uh, went to the emergency room, 
I got all checked out, and uh, they sent us home. I had a, I was married then with four kids, and, and they just all sent us home with uh, this several prescriptions of pain pills and said there was nothing wrong. But I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk. My equilibrium was bad, my shoulder and my hip, and I had 11 discs that were hurt. Anyhow, that led me down the road to today to figure out what in the world was going on. And I discovered that our body is really an electrical magnetic generator. And everything happens electrically first before it happens biologically. Even as uh, simple as a conception or fertilization inside the, the female happens, that's an electrical recognition first before it's an actual fertilization. So everything is electric. And I discovered that the majority of our body, our soft tissue in our body, is part of our electrical system. And so then I discovered that myself and my kids and uh, my ex-wife. Anyhow, um, so that led me to where the, where the body electrician, not only nutrition, but uh, con our connection to the earth, because there's an information that's an electronic transmission constantly, the frequency issue, and, and this ties into, uh, this, this goes in several different directions, but um, it, it led to the, the bodyelectrician.com, and the, uh, the concept of that we're electrical. Uh, our thought processes are electrical. Our taste buds is electrical. Our sight is electrical. Everything we are is electricity, elect electrical. And so in finding that out to, to correct my own problems from that accident in 02, I discovered a lot of bombardment on our electrical system and our digestion and our bodies in general from all different aspects to genetically modified food to genetically modified clothing to genetically modified organisms in the food chain in the air in the environment i mean we're, we're it's almost like we're having we're uh, we're under a biological attack we are everywhere it, it's 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 a war i mean there's no there, there this is biological warfare but it's against all all races all religions they're, they they love to see yeah. us fighting among each each other. Yeah, they're not whoever they is. The I would say uh, those people that are pushing these agendas, the Codex and the uh, Agenda Twenty One and so forth. Whoever they are, um, which I've got to meet a couple of them um, and uh, through some other connections, and they're real people. They're just really misguided. I mean, severely misguided, uh, insanely misguided. And uh, anyhow, uh, we're waiting. But the biggest thing, the new science that's coming out today out of Europe, which is it's very interesting, as we have all these negative attacks, if you will, going on, on the human being, at the same time, science is, is coming out proving the opposite of all the negative, which is the positive. And we are, according to the new science, and this is within a year old, um, we are over half microorganism cells. So if I have, say, 10 trillion cells that make up my organism, you know, that makes Will up, over half of them are really microorganisms from, from the environment. And the issue is we are severely out of balance. So we have, now have a lot of these genetically modified organisms. They're putting them in the Gulf. They're putting them in the chemtrails. They're putting them in the food. You're seeing the E. coli happen in Germany. Well, that E. coli in Germany is kind of a trial run which they tried in, in uh, for instance in California back a few years ago when we had the lettuce and tomato and pepper thing going on um, that is that was they were getting the genetics makeup of the E. coli their synthetic E. coli or, or modified E. coli straightened out because they need the E. coli in the food which then gets in us and uh, it's part of this um, uh, in the government uh, program called the geoengineering program, it, it's really a transhuman thing where they're altering our biology to keep us sheeple. Uh, I believe it's almost like they're, they don't want us to evolve into this spiritual being that we are. They're trying to damper that down because they're going to lose their workforce <laughs> because we don't need that anymore. They have refined. They have refined the art of slavery to the point that the slaves don't know they're slaves. I'm not a slave. I can go out and get my pickup and go get a beer. Watch. Exactly. I mean, exactly, and that's what we're finding out with the research is 
the, uh, the, the new patents that are coming out over the last few years about um, self-assembling uh, polymers, self-assembling computers. So what they can do is they can actually download information into these genetically modified E. coli, and the E. coli will reproduce itself 20, 30 different generations. They can actually, with a computer now, pull that same information back out of that E. coli. So they're putting downloading information on these E. coli. They're putting it in the food chain. We eat it. And then they're spraying us with these little uh, smart dust or nanoparticles. Then they're frequencing us, frequencing the hell out of us, not only just the heart, but all these little towers all over the country. So they're self-assembling inside of us. And I believe this is the Morgellons thing is, you know, Morgellons is a result of some of these programs that people have bought. But the, the thing that these industrialists don't really realize is the, um, I don't want to use the word spiritual, but our connection to another power, if you will, outside of ourselves, that, that the human body has a resilience that they don't get because I don't, I don't think they can understand. And the, the, the way the body has been pushing these things out through the skin and out through the out, out of itself in, a, in an effect to stay alive, and now we have things like Morgellons, and we have things like all these crazy diseases going on. And it's just a byproduct of that whole system. And, and that's what we've uh, really concentrated on at, at our body electrician clinic is helping people heal. Help in a chem that's my the talk that I'm down here in Louisiana sharing with people is living in a chemical soup. We can live in this chemicals to some extent and be healthy, but you have to look at it differently. And the body is a very amazing machine. If you know what to put in it to make it do it to, to, to so it can do its job and that's to push the junk out and to feed yourself and to be healthy. It requires a completely different mindset that I found over the last sixteen years of really searching hard, but really the last nine, extremely hard. And that's what we're all about, is helping people regain vibrant health. Because in the clinic, we've been able to reverse the heal every single disease that allopathic medicine has got. The, uh, so that, that, that's now, my goal. Now, this, this genetically modified food, it is rats won't eat. It's been reported to me that rats won't eat genetically modified corn. Right. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah, I did that with my goats. <clears throat> and actually, the goats that we had when we were in Bingham, uh, they're, they're kind of fussy, believe it or not. And they would, unless they're forced and hungry, they won't eat genetically modified foods. Period. The beans and the corn that they have, uh, they, they won't eat unless they're forced to eat them. But yeah, if they have a choice, animals will not eat genetically modified food. Neither will pets. This up. Uh, Monsanto is doing this, and uh, you know, no. What's their motto? No food we don't own. This is right. this is plank the plank number nine on the Communist Manifesto. This is uh, you know, corporate farms. And Americans have a tendency to think it can't happen here. It won't happen here. You know, we're not in the Soviet Union. We're not. Uh, we're not Russia. Ten million people were starved to death in the Ukraine under under Stalin when a communist regime take, took over. People are being starved now. The, farm, the attacks on the farms is happening right now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's why, uh, that's how they survived back then was they, they actually grew their own vegetable oil to run their tractors and everything back then. And they, it was the people that lived outside of the cities that were in the country that actually did the surviving that did not, they weren't really bothered too much by the whole Stalin and the, the government thing because they, they grew their own everything. And uh, that's why your Liberty Village for the most part is right on in my book because it's going that way. I'm, a, you know, I'm. I speak to a lot of different groups around the country, and just about every single group has the same thought as that Liberty Village is. We got to get back to community, and we got to get back to taking 